So then the next speaker is uh, Paul Calio, and he will be talking about non-adiabatic non -adiabatic molecular dynamics by MCPDFT. That's great. Thank you. Uh, the yeah. floor is yours. Well, thank you. Can you see the proper screen, yeah. the presentation? Cool. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, you got this. You um, got 15 minutes. Then you are, you are shut off the Zoom. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers for letting me present my research today. Um, I'm Paul Calio. I'm a uh, postdoc and professor Laura Gagliardi's group at the University of Chicago. And we primarily, or one of our research areas is working on MCPFT. And so my research has really been looking at how we can use MCPFT to look at non adiabatic molecular dynamics. So to begin within uh, molecular dynamics, it's very common to think of the Born Oppenheimer approximation. Um, and what that allows us to do is to treat the, separate the nuclear and electronic degrees of freedom. So for given configuration, you can uh, calculate the electronic energies for that structure. It can help you drain potential energy services and stuff along that lines. Um, but once we have a structure and the energies, what we can also do is generate nuclear forces um, and we can solve Newton's equation in motion. And what we can get is some nice videos or some time dependence of molecular structures. And so one of the drawbacks of a Born-Oppenheimer molecular dynamics is it's restricted to a single uh, potential energy or adiabatic surface. And so what we're now more interested in is looking at non-adiabatic dynamics. And this is when we're starting to look at the effects of multiple electronic states governing the nuclear dynamics. So in this framework, we're understanding that motions can trigger these different electronic transitions. And that becomes really important in things such as photochemical processes. So here on the left is some general schematic of some photochemical process where it starts in the ground singlet state and gets excited to the S2 state. Um, and then it reaches a conical intersection and goes down to the S1 state. And it can either go back down to the ground state or can do some inner system crossing into a triplet state and then phosphorus back down to the ground state. And so these are kind of like processes that we're specifically interested in. And what we want to look at is using Thule's few switches surface hopping algorithm, which is which allows us to do these non adiabatic molecular dynamics calculations. Um, and it's a mixed quantum classical approach. So in this approximation, the nuclei are still treated classically, um, but we treat the electrons quantum mechanically. So the idea of this is that you start in a given uh, born Oppenheimer surface and then let time evolve so that we can see the dynamics going down to some other electronic state. And so here's an example of methylene ammonium where it's been excited into the S2 state and within 100 femtoseconds, you can see a population trend here on the mid bottom middle right or bottom middle, um, go from the S2 to the S1 back down to the ground state. And so if we're specifically interested in these kind of excited states, that by default means we're looking more into multi-reference um, methods. And so CAS-SCF is a common one in that field. And, um, and so uh, within that framework, though, it gives us a good multi-reference wave function. Um, but most commonly, you need to do a post-SCF step to capture the dynamic correlation. So that's where perturbation theory, CASP2, ms cas 2 comes into play. Um, but what we're really interested in is using multi-configuration paired density functional theory. Um, so this is very, this is kind of like a multi-reference DFT, um, where instead of using a single Slater determinant, we've got a multi-configurational wave function. And instead of an exchange correlation functional, what, what happens is we use an on-top density functional um, here on the top right. And this is a function functional of the density and the on-top density. And so this on-top density is the probability of finding two electrons at a given position. And so this can allow us to capture kind of that dynamic correlation um, that one would, would use PT2. And so in this framework, what we do is we take uh, normal cone sham DFT functionals and we translate it for this MCPDFT approach. So that's where you see translated TBE, TBLIP, stuff like that. Um, and what's been interesting is that we've been able to get accuracy in agreement with CASPD2, um, but find that it's computationally cheaper than CASPD2. 
And so in recent years, MCPDFT analytical nuclear gradients have been developed. And what that opens up the door is starting for is uh, geometry optimizations. But what it can also do is we can start pushing the boundaries of MCPDFT to not only be used for static properties, but also to start looking at dynamical properties. Um, and so there's a thiophormaldehyde moving around. And so my research has really focused on using MCPDFT as the electronic structure method for non-adiabatic molecular dynamics. And what we've done is we've coupled the open molecast or the open molecast with Shark that was already implemented, but I included the MCPDFT application into that. Um, and so this allows us to do fuse, which is surface hopping with MCPDFT. And one of the advantages of Shark is it treats internal conversion and inter-system crossing on the same footing by using this total Hamiltonian, which is the molecular Coulomb Hamiltonian, adds some additional features. So it can be spin orbit coupling to treat inter-system crossing, or it can use dipole moments to treat light matter interactions. And so what we started to do is we want to implement this, so we've implemented this in Shark, and we wanted to test it. And so we decided to look at the inter-system crossing dynamics of thionerpromaldehyde, um, primarily because there's been some papers in the literature that have looked at this using the shark um, method. Um, and so what was what's done is they take thiophomonohyde and they looked at the two lowest singlet and two lowest triplet states. And so they excited it into the S1 state, and then they wanted to look at the inner system crossing dynamics into the T1 or T2 state. Now, experimentally, there's been no inner system crossing rates reported. Um, but there's been large fluorescence uh, experiments, and so it's been proposed that it's going to be very minimal, uh, practically none. Um, and so one other thing I also want to mention is LSA's propensity rule. And what this says is that inter-system crossing rates occur more rapidly for transitions with orbitals of different symmetry. So the S1 is an N to pi star transition. Um, and so what that means is when we start looking at these inter-system crossing, uh, phenomenon is going to prefer to transition to the T2 state, which is a pi to pi star, rather than the T1, which is n to pi star. And so the kind of figure we're looking at on the bottom right is something that we would expect is that as a function of time, the population of the T2 state would increase there. And so I briefly want to go over some of these, these two papers that have looked at shark simulations of thiaformaldehyde. Um, this first one on the left by Maya et al. Uh, from Leticia Gonzalez's group. Um, looked at the effects of various electronic structure methods on it. Um, and so they looked at multi-reference and single reference methods, but here I just wanna focus on the multi-reference. Um, so they had ms caspi 2 dynamics at a 10, six active space. Um, and then within 500 femtoseconds, they saw no transition into the T2 state. While the sa cas scf within the 500 femtoseconds, they saw about a 5% transition into the T2 state. So they did a thorough analysis of this and looking at different properties like vertical excitation energies and potential energy curves outside the Frank Condon point. And their main conclusion was that ms cas 2 uh, gave the right, reason, right answer for the right reasons. And so uh, when we start looking at MCPDFT results, what we wanna do is we wanna be able to see results that are in agreement with ms cas 2 here on the left. Um, then there's this work um, by Zhang et al. from Don Trular's group, and they are primarily looking at various decoherent schemes on the dynamics. Um, and so I show this here just to look at, um, they use a larger active space. So they use a 1210 on the right compared to the 106 on the left. And what they see is they see a dampening in that population um, and it also a dampening oscillation as a function of time. So I won't go in much detail of that. I just wanted to say that um, to put it out there. So now I want to look at the uh, results from MCPDFT. And so on the left are CAS SCF at a 10, 6 active space. Uh, within 500 femtoseconds, you see about a 4% transition into the T2 state. Um, while on the other hand, with MCPDFT at the 10, 6, we see no population transition into the T2 state. And so that's giving us good agreement with CASPD2, which uh, results, which has been very promising. But one thing what we're also able to do is go beyond the 10-6 active space and start looking at dynamics at the 12-10 active space. 
So here at the bottom left is CAS SCF at a 1210, and we do see a reduction in the population transition, which is in uh, agreement with the work comparing Mai et al. and Zhang et al.'s work. Um, but again, with the MCPDFT within 500 cryptoseconds, we don't see any transition into the T2 state. And so that's promising that one, we're able to get results that agree with the ms cas 2 but two, we're also able to go to a larger active space um, as the cas 2 1210 was, was just too expensive. And so I wanna look a little bit more into the chemistry of thiophormaldehyde here. And so as a function of time, uh, these are the carbon sulfur average bond distance. Um, and what we see within the CAS SCF results, um, the mean, the average of it is about 1.8 angstroms. Um, but when we go from the CAS SCF to the MCPDFT, what we do, we do see is a reduction in that. So instead of the mean average of a 1.8, it goes about down to 1.7 or 1.75. Um, and you also see some kind of dampening in the oscillations. It's not going as uh, broad uh, compared to the CAS SCF. And why this is important is because this has a direct correlation on the spin orbit coupling. So here on, in the black uh, is the spin orbit coupling between the S1 and the T2 state. Um, and we see that the spin orbit coupling does follow the trend of the carbon sulfur bond. And so within the MCPDFT, when we have that dynamic correlation, what we do see is a damping in the spin orbit coupling primarily because of the geometry being different in the MCPDFT than in the CAS SCF. And that'll directly affect the, spin, the transition from the S1 to the T2 state. And so I wanna go into a little bit more details and kind of like the nuclear dynamics. Um, so here on the top left is the CAS SCF 1210 uh, results that I showed on the previous slide. I've just zoomed in looking at it. Um, and if we were to compare that to the work by Zhang et al., there obviously is a difference there. Um, and this, at around 150 femtoseconds, the simulation that I ran had this transition from the S1 to T2. Um, and there could be a lot of reasons, there's a lot of differences between my simulation setups and the simulation setup of Zhang et al., but what I really wanted to look at was the time set dependence on this. And so I took that one trajectory that caused this transition in the top left figure. Um, and I used the nuclear and electronic time step of Zhang et al's work. Um, so this larger time step I was pre previously using was nuclear time step 0.5 uh, and electronic time step of 0.02. And if we look at this figure on the top right, uh, there's that transition around 150 femtoseconds on the solid yellow line. But when we go to that smaller time step, we don't see that transition and we just see those oscillations there. And so what this seems to indicate is that for future applications, when the time steps do matter, and it's not surprising as smaller time steps is a better approximation to the nuclear dynamics, um, that MCPDFT could be an approach for that to capture both the dynamic correlation and the computational cheapness of that. So in conclusion, my work has really been working at using MCPDFT electronic structure method for simulations within the SHARK program. Um, and our preliminary results or our results so far indicate that uh, they agree with MS-CAS-PD2. And what we're able to do is go to a larger active space uh, than CAS, MS-CAS-PD2. Um, and what we're currently looking at is starting to look at MCPDFT simulations near conical intersections, since this this application was more on the inter-system crossing, we want to start looking at these internal conversions. And that's going to have to start looking at state interaction methods of MCPFT. In addition to that, it's requiring us to develop non adiabatic couplings to, for the nuclear dynamics and transition amongst these electronic states. Um, with that, I'd like to thank Professor Laura Gagliardi and Professor Don Trulard for uh, their advising and their assistance and their help in this. And I'd also like to thank uh, the Gagliardi Group and our funding, uh, DOE and UChicago. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thanks, Paul. We are back on track. So I will take a couple of questions. No question? Ron? I have a question. How much faster is the 
MCPDC compared to cross uh, sorry EFT. Can you repeat the last part? How much faster is MCPFT compared to? So the multi state cross region two calculation versus the approach you suggested. How much faster is it? Uh, that I'm not quite sure. Um, they say in the literature that the CAS PD2 was about 10 times slower than the CAS SCF. Um, and so what we see with the 10.6 is that the MCPFT was about that. Um, but then when we go to the larger active spaces that we're, we started to see some more of that speed up compared to that ratio there. All right. Yeah, so there's some work in the group that has looked at like hybrid uh, where you take energy from CAS SCF and from the MCPDFT there. Um, but that's the limit of the application. So there's the LDA, GGAs, and then there's kind of the hybrids there. Uh, currently, there are no meta GGA translated functionals for MCPDFT. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stefan? No? Okay. And I don't see questions from the chat. Um, join me in thanking uh, the speaker again.